Hey brothers, this is Justin with Masonic Improvement. I hope everybody's doing great today. It's been a few weeks since I pushed out any content and truthfully, the reason is things have been really hopping for me. Things have been very productive. I've been busy in a very good way and I honestly just haven't had the time to push out any content. What that has given me time to do is really uh, stew on some things longer than I normally probably would before, before talking about it and I think that's been for everybody's benefit. I'm about to push out some content right now on this video. We're going to talk about some things that need to be talked about. Things that frankly I've been putting off for a while and it's going to be a very honest conversation. We're going to be very straightforward and there's going to be no sugarcoating. Before I get started though, if you would just please add, just smash that like button for me and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. That really helps get the message out, helps share the content brings awareness to Masonic improvement and introduces people to new ideas. That said, I really want to just jump into this because I honestly don't know how long of a video this is going to be. If I talk as long as I feel like I'm going to, it might be quite a lengthy video. So we're not going to waste a whole lot of time. That said, so like I said earlier, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. This is going to be a very straight, straightforward um, video. I'm not going to beat around the bush. And the reason for that, well, normally when people are, are straightforward and they just want to cut to the chase is because they're angry about something. And I'm not, I'm not angry about anything, but that said, in the interest of peace and harmony, we often sugarcoat things in our fraternity. And when you sugarcoat things, when you beat around the bush, when you don't really just say what needs to be said, it really detracts from the importance of what you're trying to get across it if there should be a sense of urgency and you beat around the bush you lose that sense of urgency and you don't really get what needs to be done achieved so i'm just going to tell you how it is the state of freemasonry from my experience and granted all the lodges i visited have been in texas the state of the individual lodge is poor the individual lodge is in poor shape and that really even applies to your bigger lodges. So in your bigger cities, you know, you'd expect the lodges to be in better shape, but they're really in the same situation as many lodges are in the rural areas of Texas. That is often you have buildings that were built in the fifties or sixties. They are in bad shape. They have not been maintained very well. You often see these lodges with the same due structure and the same endowment structures that they had for, decades and they're really hurting they're hurting they're a bad they're in a bad place they don't have the people to put in the work they don't have the resource to put in the work their their structures are decaying around them and there's no there's no there's no hope in sight there's nothing there's nothing to look forward to there's no relief in that in that ends we're, we're just kind of it's like you're sitting on a sinking ship and you're just trying to see how far you go before it takes on too much water and, and you know, you're out of ship. We can't do this. We can't do that. And I don't know what we as individual Masons or as lodges as a whole feel like we're waiting for because it's not coming. I don't know really what you expect. You know, we're, we kick the can down the road so many times in so many cases for decades. These, these issues that have been coming up again and again and again, we'll slap a Band-Aid on it or we'll ignore it and let someone else deal with it down the future. All the while we have no intention, I'm speaking from a general perspective here, all the while the fraternity has no intention of doing anything that hasn't already been done before, but we're gonna keep this can down the road in hopes that somebody will do something that hasn't been done before to fix things. Just let that sink in. We're totally unwilling to try new things on one hand, but on the other hand, we're kicking cans down the road. We're putting off issues, knowing full well that someone's going to have to try something new somewhere down the road. The thing is, you can't expect society to change, to all of a sudden want to you know, join the bandwagon and join Freemasonry in masses and things be like they were you know, in the 40s, 50s, 60s. It's just not going to happen. So the main thing that I really want to hit on today, I very recently visited two lodges. I won't name names, but I, I visited two lodges. And due to the current situation of everything, um, you know what I'm talking about with the, with the quarantining and everything, 
we, as many, let me, how do I want to put this? Most lodges rely very heavily on fundraising activities to supplement uh, very low dues structures. And since they can't get out and do things in a traditional way, you know, the, the, the pancake breakfast and, and, you know, the raffles and, and all these things that we would traditionally do, traditionally do to really supplement the, the largest budget, that's out the window right now. We can't do this. So these two lodges I visited, they're hurting very badly for cash. You know, we, they're in the red. They are actually, their, their bills are costing more than, than they have in their uh, bank accounts right now. And part of me, you, you know, you could say, this is an isolated incident. You're talking about two lodges, but here's the thing. These are two totally separate lodges. And if it's applying to two lodges, if it was just one lodge, I might say, eh, there's probably some other lodges that are experiencing this. But literally the second lodge I visited right after this one had the same issue. And that tells me that this is a bigger problem because if two lodges are experiencing the same problem, then it's, it's in all likelihood, probably, if we're being frank, but it's like, like I said, I would be, the majority of lodges are probably in the same situation. Where, where they just don't have the income coming in to manage things. And this is a, a can that we have kicked down the road for a very long time. So really, what I wanna, what I wanna really hit home on this, because this isn't gonna be a lecture about dues or anything like that, because this is a far wider problem. This, this issue encompasses way more I mean, it's really all encompassing because every aspect of our fraternity is, is, is riddled with these problems that don't look so big by themselves or maybe didn't look so big decades ago, but when you just put things off, it just gets worse. We have an organization right now and like many other organizations, they're trying to reach out. They're trying to appeal to younger generations, my generation, people in their 30s and their 20s. But if you look at your lodge and if you look at the way things are done, is that really something that's going to appeal to the, your target demographic? And here's a bigger problem. People my age are interested. We are interested in fraternity. We might not care about the Lions Club. We might not care about the Rotary or Kiwanis or um, Not So Pythias or the Odd Fellows, but we're interested in Freemasonry. We are. But when we go on those buildings and they're falling apart and the carpet is moldy and the ceiling tiles are falling in and what is that smell? And the food is cold and subpar. Why, why, why are we leaving our families for a night for this? I was talking to another brother very recently and he said something that really struck me because it's very accurate. Our generation is struggling to deal with problems that were created by older generations. And I know that's, that's going to piss some people off. I'll be frank. It's going to make some people angry, but our problems, the issues our fraternity has didn't come out of a vacuum. It wasn't pulled out of some void. These are problems that were known for quite some time. There are papers written about many of these problems. Back in the 50s, they foresaw these issues, but nobody did anything. So the older generations are expecting my generation to want to join a decaying lodge riddled with problems handed down to them from older generations. But to be fair, this is something we can do. We can handle this. I love fixing things. My generation loves to take ownership, but we can't take ownership. It's not being allowed. So, mm, so brothers have kept the lodges surviving, surviving, not thriving or growing or booming, but surviving for decades. Why? To hand it on to somebody else. To hand it off to somebody else. Let someone else 
you know, take ownership of this organization. Keep in mind that we've already established that many of these problems are being kicked down the road for future generations. But now future generations are here. We're ready. We're, we see these problems. We acknowledge them. Many of them are glaring, but we can't do anything about it. We can't take ownership of it because it will not be relinquished to us. Now, I'm not coming in with some kind of entitlement mentality. I'm not saying just because a lodge is looking for a young guy and a young guy joins, they should just do anything he asks and hand anything to him. But this mentality of this is how we've always done things, so why should we do anything different is exactly what got us in a situation we're in now. And it is a situation, this unwillingness to adopt the C word is what got us where we are. The same policies and the same mentality and the same attitudes that our organization has had in the 40s and 50s and has refused to change in many cases will not get us past this century. We have, we have to start embracing new ideas. We have to be willing to move forward. And I'm not talking about anything drastic, nothing drastic at all. But a simple willingness to entertain new ideas and try things we haven't tried before. That's all it takes. The thing is, I know, for example, here in Texas, the uh, it, there's a there's a belief that that all degrees have to be cookie cutter and exactly the same. All lodges need to be more or less exactly the same. The same ritual, the same work. But if you look at, let's just take a step back. I don't know how familiar everybody is with evolution or survival of the fittest. Let's look at survival of the fittest because that's probably something more people are, are accustomed to. If you take 100 deer, okay, and say a, a new hunter is introduced to an area, like a new, a new type, like a wolf that hasn't seen this area before, these deer are going to be totally unprepared for it. But you'll see a few deer that will hopefully survive and thrive and they'll continue to reproduce. The reason for this is because there's variation in every deer. Every deer is a little bit different. And so you might have one or two or a handful that maybe are a little bit sharper or maybe can run a little bit faster or blend in a little bit better or just have a little bit different smell. And, and that variation is what allows that species of deer to survive you have to have some kind of variation. And so this, this unwillingness to accept any, any new ideas in lodges, new approaches, it's this, this unwillingness to step away from this cookie cutter formula is very harmful. And if you look at many lodges, not just in the ritual, but their approach, it's a very cookie cutter approach. And what I mean is, low dues, fundraising, low standards, let anybody in. Things I've talked about. And so it's all coming to a head, I think, right now, because times are getting tough. Times are hard. And granted, it's, it's, it's an issue of large finance that really brought this to my, I don't know. It's been, it's been on my mind for a while, but, but actually seeing now. And I don't like to be that guy that says, I told you so, but I told you so. I covered this before. I've talked about dues. I've said, and basically what I said was if you don't have enough money, if your dues aren't high enough, that you're able to put a little bit on the side, something's going to come up eventually. You're going to wish you were able to. And now we're there. And I never wanted to be there. I never wanted to be able to say, I told you so, but we're at that point. And we need to start looking at everything. Everything. Because it doesn't matter if your lodge is doing fine financially, if you can't attract and retain people that, you know, if you can't fulfill what you promised when they came to your, when they came to your lodge or when they approach you and ask for a petition, if you promise that you're going to take them and make them a better man and all you do is talk about minutes and communications, what did you really promise that guy? So I know this is more like a rant. I know this isn't very structured. It's just me talking. But these are things that have been on my mind for a while. I would really love to hear everybody else's opinion. 
like I said, I know this is probably going to get some people fired up. Here's the, th you know what? When you, when you make decisions, there's two ways you can approach it. You could do it emotionally or you could do it logically. When you make decisions emotionally, those are typically bad decisions. And we have for a long time made very emotional decisions. We don't want to offend anybody. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to pay more. We don't want to put any more work in. We don't want to do anything that might cause, you know, that might disrupt the peace and harmony at the lodge. And the fact is we're all grown men. If we can't have conversations without getting pissy at each other, we got bigger problems. But when you make logical decisions based on data and evidence and just general knowledge, you tend to fare better. We have to stop making these emotional decisions. We got to start looking at things logically. I think most people know when you go to a fundraising, when you go to a fundraiser, you don't see a lot of young people at these things. I'm not saying never, because you will. I've gone to a few. But if that's what the young people wanted, they'd be joining in mass. They'd be going to that, you know, they'd be doing that left and right. But then if you go to things like, like your Masonic conventions and your, and your lodge dinners, it's full of young people. I'm not saying you need to only appeal to the young people, but they're the future of the fraternity. They're ultimately going to choose the direction this fraternity goes. And so you need to start, we need to start listening to, to one another. I'm not suggesting that, like I said earlier, you know, just because young people are joining a lodge doesn't mean that the lodge should totally change itself or the, or the grand lodge should totally reinvent itself to uh, appeal to these younger people. But we should be willing to hear them out. We should be more willing to embrace new ideas that don't conflict with our laws or rules. And even then, we need to be more willing to embrace the idea of changing these laws and rules when, when, the, when things are properly presented themselves. You know, I love, I love my fraternity. I love Freemasonry. I'm a third-generation Freemason. I want the organization to be there for my children. I want something to leave them. I don't want to leave my children decaying buildings, cheap dues, and a, and a subpar experience. Because that's not Freemasonry. It's a shell of what Freemasonry should be. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there because I, whoa, I spoke for almost 20 minutes. So, um, you know, I just want to hear everybody's opinion. You agree or disagree? We, we know, we know we can't keep doing what we're doing. I think even those that would, you know, just adamantly disagree with my idea, with what I'm saying, I even believe that if you just hate every word that I've said, you have to agree on some level that we can't keep doing what we're doing for forever. Something has to change. And we could be proactive or we could be reactive. And if we're reactive, it might be too late. But we still have time to be proactive, in my opinion. Anyway, I'd love to hear what you guys' thoughts are. Again, please just slap that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.